everyone, this is Achute de Bava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to take a look at the Sun's upcoming square with Saturn, which is happening just as the lunar eclipse in Scorpio is coming through. So it's this combination we're going to look at today, but specifically, how does the Sun, what themes can we expect from the Sun's square to Saturn, and how are they showing up right as this lunar eclipse in Scorpio is about to come through? So that is our focus for today. Remember, if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Uh, Everyone, please share your comments in the comments section. Even if you've been watching for a while and you haven't uh, subscribed, it helps the channel. It helps people to find the channel and people do all of that. So appreciate your support. You can always find a transcript of my talk on the website, nightlightastrology.com, usually within 24 hours. My new class, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic, starts on June 5th. You can check it out on my website, which is nightlightastrology.com. And when you do, click on the courses page, go to the first year course, you can scroll down to learn all about it. Of course, my year two and horary classes start June 11th and 12th. So you can check those out as well, especially if you're someone who has never studied horary before and you're maybe you're familiar with traditional astrology, but you've never studied the art of horary predictions. That is a fantastic course. Uh, and um, uh, so you can check that out as well on the horary course page. The, the year one course starts on June 5th. It's a one-year immersion into ancient astrology, perfect for people who want to deepen their knowledge and understanding of astrology, as well as maybe even starting a practice of your own. You can learn all about it on the website. When you scroll down, you'll notice this course includes, and there's a good summary of what is included in the course right there. There's 30 online webinars on the year. They meet from noon to about 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time on Sundays. Uh, I lead all of those webinars, there's 30 on the year. In between major sections of the course, there's also about eight breakout study sessions led by our tutoring staff so that people can ask questions, uh, often look at charts together, things like that. We also have an interactive group forum discussion that's staffed with tutors, and you can ask me questions anytime throughout the year. There's 12 classes led by guest teachers outside of our normal classes. Uh, tons of bonus material and um yeah you can keep everything so if you can't attend live you can always watch the replays check out at the bottom of the screen uh on the bottom of the page there you'll notice the early bird payment that saves you 500 dollars off there's a 12-month payment plan if you need it and then don't forget the need-based tuition option we have a limit, limited amount of these available but they are there for people who for whatever reason can't make the price point but really want to study astrology or commit to an immersion in, a, in an astrology course like this one. And, you know, if it's you're a single parent, you're working part time, or it's just like you're on a fixed income. Um, we don't like to price people out of uh, spirit, like learning a spiritual topic. So uh, check that out if it'll help you. So uh, thank you guys for listening. And I'm really excited to get into today's topic because there's an eclipse coming up. Eclipse season means big changes are, um, <clears throat> in process. We had a very big solar eclipse at the beginning of this moon cycle in the sign of Taurus, uh, moving into a conjunction with Uranus. So a lot of dynamic change in this cycle that wants to, uh, you know, assert itself. But we also have a full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio that's coming up. And that's a that that transit that that combination is very powerful because the moon in Scorpio is in its fall. So it tends to bring about themes and events that are more challenging and difficult, especially on an emotional level. So we're going to talk a little bit about what, what does it mean that on May 15th, for example, the sun is going to be square to Saturn. So the sun in Taurus will be square to Saturn in Aquarius. And then the next day or the evening sort of 15th into the 16th, we also get this lunar eclipse in Scorpio. So you're talking about a lunar eclipse, in other words, that's toned by the presence of a Sun-Saturn square. Well, to, to and if you watch earlier this week, I did sort of a summary of all of the transits that are culminating at the same time of the eclipse. There's a lot of them. There's a few that are happening right after the eclipse as well. So go back and watch that video um, because you'll get a lot of information about the the, the sort of 20,000 foot view of this week and say next week, uh, which is going to be, you know, it, kind of treating it more broadly. We're going to focus a little bit more narrowly today. This lunar eclipse is going to force us to adjust our expectations, potentially make some compromises, or um, there will be some unexpected twists and turns that come up relative to the direction that the new moon solar eclipse wants wanted or wants to take us in. So that, that new moon had the seeds of revolution, conjoining Uranus, uh, the desire for 
know, it's an exalted moon at that point in Taurus with the new moon. So that that desire for um, power and peace, you know, sort of Taurian signatures, security, stability, ease, enjoyment, sensuality, um, and that and and in order to do so, there's a shakeup. There's a a new direction, a new image, a new ideal sort of presenting itself. Well, it's being met with uh, a Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse comes through halfway through the cycle and says you may have to adjust expectations. There may be some loss. There may be some surrendering or letting go of what you had hoped for. Or there may be even some kind of divine compromise that is being made right now or some sacrifice that has to be made in order to get where you want to go. So it's not it's not um, smooth sailing from the new moon solar eclipse with Uranus with an you know exalted moon in Taurus. It, that The feeling behind that new moon is like this very uplifting, inspiring uh, you know, new direction, a lot of hope for the future, you know, the feeling of progressive enlightenment, very Uranian. But now we're being met, we're, you know, it's kind of a gut check that's happening halfway through the cycle. That doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to foil all plans or mess everything up, but it's important to recognize what this sequence brings. So uh, let me put it up on the real time clock really quick before we start um, opening it up a little bit more. And let's just take a look at it. So here you can see the sun moving into that three degree range and three degrees is about the engagement range for a transit. Saturn's at about 24 degrees. So you're going to start to feel the engagement of the sun square to Saturn over the course of the next three or four days at the same time that you see that lunar eclipse coming through around the 15th into the 16th. <clears throat> so that's why it's so important. Here you can see uh, on the other hand, let's take a look at the moon. So as I'm making this, the moon is in Virgo, about to enter Libra. And by the time it reaches um, Scorpio, so you kind of drag it down to Scorpio here, it'll be opposing the sun. And that's when we get our um, lunar eclipse. So we're just some days away. The, the moon is it's in its waxing gibbous phase right now. So it's a, it's a fiery moon that's building toward this pretty dramatic culmination in a sign that's very difficult for the moon. The moon was traditionally depressed in its fall in the sign. It's a Mars ruled sign. So you have the, an aura of conflict, disappointment, loss, grief, surrendering, letting go. Uh, also, also catharsis and uh, kind of that, that quintessential scorpionic rebirthing quality, but not usually doesn't come without a little bit of, you know, emotional turmoil or, you know, that inner work that we have to do and oftentimes letting go of things that we had hoped for or adjusting or being forced to sort of adjust our expectations. So to me, this theme is actually amplified by the fact that the sun is squaring Saturn. So, you know, but in order to differentiate it a little bit and add some nuance to what this full moon in Scorpio brings, um, let's talk about five themes that we can watch for with Saturn square to the sun. And these are classic themes. If you were born if you were born with the sun square Saturn in your birth chart, these themes could be ones that you deal with perpetually, psychologically, um, in different areas of your life. Right now, you know, we may be living through them for the next week, but they're a little bit more punctuated and sort of big. They're, they're, they're speaking in a megaphone because of their proximity to the lunar eclipse. So five themes to watch for. With the sun squaring Saturn, Remember that the sun represents an ideal image. An ideal image would be like uh, something noble, something virtuous, something cast in gold. So if you have the image, for example, of happiness or goodness or truth or beauty, um, in a sense, all of these are solar insofar as the sun is sort of um, a symbol that tells us something about the nature of archetypes themselves. They live or exist in some kind of ideal world, and they are reflected here in this world, in our experiences and our desires, and what motivates our our lives. Like, what is the you know in Romeo and Juliet? What is the desire? It's love. You know, it's it's connection. It's uh, romance. It's beauty. You know, and in in a sense, it's also tragedy. So anything can be, there, there's the archetypes, all archetypes are cast in gold, even the ones that are sort of dark. They're all gilded in the sense of being ideal, the ideal tragedy, like Shakespeare's famous, another sun quality, because he was able to capture something timeless and true and beautiful about every, you know, human experience from tragedy to comedy to adventure. 
So everything the sun represents usually has to do with something ideal, an ideal image, an ideal desire, an, an, an archetypal uh, form or, or image or shape that's sort of cast in gold. Now, often enough, we experience the sun in terms of the desires and drives that guide our lives along as in, you know, what do I want to do with my life or what are my ambitions or something like that? That's how we read the sun sign in your birth chart by house, by sign, by aspect and so forth. What's interesting about suns square to Saturn is that when the sun is square to Saturn, Saturn is the stain. Saturn is darkness. Saturn is naturally the planet that opposes the sun's sign of Leo from its home sign in Aquarius. Saturn is naturally the planet that opposes the sun's exaltation sign of Aries from its exaltation in Libra. The sun and Saturn were pitted against one another um, for a lot of reasons, but one of them philosophically is very easy to understand. In this world, there might be an ideal, but then that ideal can be like stained or tarnished or uh, there can be, it can somehow fail to live up to uh, the hope or the or the ideal image, right? So, for example, let's say that your ideal is to be an Olympic athlete, uh, but you let's say you um, you somehow lose a lose a leg or lose a foot or something, God forbid. So, in a sense, your ideal standing on the platform, you know, having achieved gold, maybe it's not possible anymore. I mean, maybe it is, but maybe now it's very hard to do because Saturn has cast a shadow over the ideal image. It's marred it, stained it, twisted it, corrupted it somehow. So for example, the sun and Saturn can be about character faults. Ideally, I would be, you know, the most heroic father who ever lived, but oftentimes, you know, I'm not a great father or something. Or ideally, I would be very, very good at something that I really like and care about, but sometimes I just fall short and I suck at something. So anything that like casts a shadow over a stain, a, a, like it kind of mars something that we hope or wish for, it's for example, when we're, later we're going to talk about death of or complications around solar figures. When your father dies, there's something like, and my father's still alive, but I've talked to many people who've lost their father. There's something of, you know, the ideal image of your father, right? And, and the, the, the death of the father and the way that that hits your psyche, very sun Saturn. There's, it's, it's like you, you, you often think, I hear people say this all the time for 12 years of counseling people with astrology. I just thought my dad would live forever. Okay, and then there's the sun Saturn. No, you know, e even that kind of heroic image of your father. Not everyone has, an, I, obviously, this kind of dad, but let's say you did. When dad dies, there's a sense of like, okay, this, there's, there's this, this thing that I thought lived forever is mortal. Or the thing as it appears in the world is always frail in comparison to the ideal. This is a sun Saturn dynamic. When we go through sun Saturn times or eras in our life, uh, there is a sense of, I can't live forever. The ideal image that I thought I wanted or had is not living up to, you know, it's not living up to it. Uh, so any time that an, an image, an ideal, an aspiration is somehow stained, falling short, disappointed, um, injured, harmed, that's a Sun-Saturn dynamic. So now take that into consideration as we are considering the beginning of this moon cycle the sun with the exalted moon around Uranus, an ideal image cast in the light of the exalted moon and the, the home sign of Venus, something beautiful, true, that we want, that we're moving toward. And I, But now there's this check. As we come to the full moon in Scorpio, there's a sense that the ideal image is being challenged, stained. Somehow it can't live up to the, to the ideal in this world, or we have to deal with the complications or the you know, the, the, you're tw you've twisted an ankle before the race, before the big race, so to speak. So that's what's coming up right before the full moon. It's very important that we tend to that. One of the ways you can tend to that is by looking at whatever is blocking you in your life right now or anything you feel frustrated by or like, oh, I'm, I feel like something is like staining or tarnishing where I wanted or hoped to go or where I think someone or something should be. And, um, <clears throat> try to recognize 
that there's still beauty. Um, I want to read you guys something. I'm going to read you this. This comes from James Hillman. And he. this is what he wrote about Saturn later in life as he was older in age. And you may have heard me read this before. I think I have read it once before. But as I've grown older, I've come to realize that the curses, the frustrations, and the character faults, see how they're all stains upon something ideal, visited on me by Saturn means something completely different than what I thought when I was younger. I took them literally as curses, and I cursed my stars for not giving me what I believed I needed and wanted. That is, I cursed Saturn, to use the old language. But it isn't Saturn who curses us. We curse him. We make him into that poor, shunned, limping old god because we don't understand his mode of blessing. What a curse it must be to keep giving gifts that are received as punishments. The faults and frustrations he visits on us are his way of keeping us true to our particular image. No way out. The old lore attributed the last years of life to Saturn. That makes sense. Only now can I begin to reconcile myself with and not rebel against what I am and what I am not. See, one of the blessings of having those stains come over the ideal image is that often the ideal image is like a gold fever especially with Uranus and Taurus. It's like King Midas and the golden touch. It, what you long for and wish for and desire for, uh, you know, it actually can not be very good for you. There can be hubris. There can be a sort of luciferic blindness that takes over and guides us towards some ideal that we hope for only to be met by a limitation. We hate the limitation. We blame Saturn for messing everything up, but Saturn is actually saying there's something about that image that you want or that you desire that's not totally real or authentic. See, Saturn was also in contrast to the sun who presents the ideal image, Saturn was the lord of feigned appearances. And so when Saturn hits the sun, it will often show us there's something inauthentic about this. That's why I'm casting a shadow over it, or that's why you're receiving some feeling of the, the goal or the desire being limited or blocked in some way. But if you if you take what's blocking you and, and offer it something, almost like, you know, sit down you know, make a vision board of what's blocking you, you know, set it on your altar and give something to it, give some water to it, give a candle to it. It's then that we receive the blessing of Saturn because Saturn is, as Hillman is saying, Saturn is trying to keep us true to something. And the sun for as glorious and light and gold, golden as it can be, can also set us up to chase things that are, uh, we're, we're, we're sort of blinded by, right? So Saturn casts a shadow over that 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 radiant light as a way of bringing us back to our senses sometimes and calibrating the image so that it's more in tune with who we actually are and what is actually real and possible. So you know, the image is stained. That's number one. Number two, creative contractions. So um, Saturn is also often, like the, the contractions associated with labor and with birthing something. So in order for an ideal image to be born, you also often go through periods of testing and trials and contractions before that thing can actually come into form. And so for as much as Saturn may cast a, a shadow over things and block or limit or frustrate us, uh, which could be a blessing in disguise, Saturn will also present limitations as a kind of contraction that comes as a as a part of what is being born creatively now that sometimes that means that what's being born creatively is not quite what you thought it would be or other times it is what you thought it would be but you have to go through some hell to get there so either way um, saturn can present these creative contractions and remember this is coming through as a full moon in scorpio is coming through and sort of acting as this gut check against the very idealistic uranian solar eclipse that we experienced number three is meaningful obstacles a meaningful obstacle is the difference is and I, this kind of feeds into what i've said already but the the a meaningful obstacle is something that is not blocking you but demanding that it be included in the way things turn out at first it appears like an obstacle but if you take it seriously and you contemplate its presence as a as an omen as as a being as a spirit as an image or as a new um 
as a new color that wants to make it onto the canvas. It, whatever comes up in blocks, if you spend a little time with it, you might find that the block is actually a meaningful, uh, it's asking to be meaningfully incorporated into a creative process, which could feel like a compromise at first, but might actually make something better than what you had in mind. And many creative, like I've heard lots of like creative geniuses talk this way. Like, I don't know, creative geniuses in different industries, I guess. But like, how many creative people have I heard say that the, the difference between, or even like uh, musicians who say the difference between a good jazz musician and a bad one is that when, you know, when a bad jazz musician hits a, a, a wrong note, you know, then they, they, get they, they get messed up and you can tell. When a good one hits a wrong note, they realize that that wrong note is the thing to play on that takes the music in a new direction. And that's kind of what we're talking about. And lots of creative people in different industries have said that. Sun Saturn can very much be like that. So, but that would still be kind of a gut check. We have to be resourceful and creative and very present to, uh, given the, you know, intense sort of idealism of this new moon solar eclipse with, you know, with Uranus that we're coming off from. Number four is the weight of duty or responsibility. So just that feeling sometimes all of a sudden obligations, responsibilities, duties, like heavy, mature, serious themes just kind of crop up. And that can clip our wings a little bit, given where we've come from at the beginning of this with a very, you know, Icarus like, you know, Uranian solar eclipse. Uh, with an exalted moon, loves to fly to the heights, loves to think about what's possible, has the image of beauty, luxury, stability, power, all built into that Taurian um, starting point. And now it's like, yeah, but there's there's a gravitas here. There's a seriousness, there's maturity, there's discipline, there's duty, there's responsibility somehow coming in and, and demanding that it be included. Another way of thinking about some of the creative contractions that we just talked about. Number five would be the death of or complications around solar figures. Now, solar figure could be a dad, a leader, a political figure, the head of a company, uh, someone who's famous. But you could see, for example, I wouldn't be surprised every time the sun squares Saturn, usually you see like a famous Hollywood actor die or you see a politician uh, with that stain cast over them somehow, corruption, scandal, confrontation with authority, the death of a father, uh, th father's mortality becoming more present to you, even if he doesn't die. For example, uh, Sun Saturn, my dad had, um, had a previous Sun Saturn dynamic, and when it was transiting in my chart, my dad had some blood clots. He didn't die, he ended up being okay, but it, it, was, it brought attention, it drew my attention to the fact that my dad's not going to be here forever. So, like, you know, just those kinds of energies can present themselves. Now, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a man, right? But, you know, kind of stereotypical son, you know, man stuff. But it could be uh, anyone who holds a position of fame or prominence that's uh, having some kind of um, challenge to their integrity or the ideal that they present is somehow falling or fading or dying. Um, so, watch for those themes as well because that's very and, and as that happens sometimes like you wouldn't believe how regularly i'll talk to clients and right as a young man or woman is about to take a big step in their career their father retires their father dies their father has a stroke their their father uh you know even just like gets COVID or something like whatever the case might be it's like i'm taking this big step forward i'm earning my stripes i'm taking i'm maturing i'm becoming more capable they're giving me more responsibility my title is gaining i'm becoming more masterful and then simultaneously some other figure in your life is diminishing it's amazing how regularly that happens because there's a kind of passing of the torch or baton between the sun and saturn it's as if the sun and saturn also represent almost like a transmission of uh you know an elder you know carry carry on you know uh you know carry on from here you've got it type of thing that the universe somehow orchestrates under these transits it's uncanny anyway so running through those themes i hope that you have a feeling now for what kind of energy is presenting itself right around this lunar eclipse in scorpio uh, and that should give you a feeling for how to work through the next days ahead. Of course, we're going to do a video as well for Friday on the lunar eclipse in Scorpio uh, as well. So we'll we'll be visiting that lunar eclipse in Scorpio through the houses. And I've got some key words for every sun and rising sign horoscope. So we'll do those. Also on Friday afternoon, I'll be doing a live stream 
uh, with three or four alumni from my programs. It'll be a live stream so that you can come on, learn more about the programs. We're going to talk astrology, the journey of studying astrology, and people can ask questions about my courses if you want to learn more about them from three or four women who just graduated from the program. I wish I could bring on some guys, but like I, you know, mo like I guess I guess according to um, you know, the, the research that we've done, which, we, you know, we may, it's not like perfect numbers, but the statistics we've generated is like 85% of my students over the years have been women. It's very similar to the yoga studio. When we had a yoga studio, it was like 90% of our clientele were women. So, but you'll get to hear from some really cool women who were just in the program. Um, and, uh, and, and what they've, what they have, what they learned, what they loved about the program, what they're doing with what they learned going forward. And they're all really cool people. So that's 1.30 central time on Friday, 2.30 Eastern time. We'll be doing a live stream. So check those things out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share your comments in the comments section. I really appreciate it when you do so. Helps the channel grow. Transcripts of my talk can be found on the website, nightlightastrology.com, as can information about my new course, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic, which starts on June 5th. Year 2 in Horary start June 11th and 12th. Uh, don't forget to check out the need-based tuition option uh, if that interests you. And also, if you have any stories to share about Sun Square Saturn, about the eclipses coming up, drop a comment in the comment section. Use the hashtag grabbed or email us your story, grabbed at nightlightastrology.com. Sometimes we aggregate those and share your stories in special episodes. Really fun. So we're hoping to do that probably next week after the eclipse passes through and we have a little bit of a lull from all of these really intense back-to-back -back transits. All right. Well, that's what I've got for today. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you're having a great day and we will see you again tomorrow. Bye everyone.